Moat House Cottage in Canley, England was the humble birthplace of Sir Henry Parkes. Family poverty and a father in debtor's prison meant Henry had to go out to work at the age of eight and as a result had little formal education. His first job was in a rope factory in Birmingham, a bleak place where he was harshly treated. At the age of 12, encouraged by his mother who thought he should learn a trade, he learnt the skill of ivory turning. By the time he was 19, Henry was engaged to a shy young woman he had met at a church in Birmingham. Her name was Clorinda Varney. She was two years his senior and a dressmaker by trade. Two years later, in 1836, the couple married, much to the disapproval of Clorinda's father, who thought she had married beneath her. In 1839, they embarked on a journey to New South Wales by assisted passage aboard the square rigger, the Strathfieldsy. Two days before they landed in Sydney, Clorinda gave birth to her third child, having already lost two infants in the first two years of their marriage. After a number of odd jobs, Henry set up shop at number 25 Hunter Street, Sydney, selling his turned ivory pieces and other imported goods. An attempt to expand his business, against which Clorinda had cautioned him, ended in failure and debt. Henry then bought a printing press and established a newspaper he named The Empire, a paper to rival John Fairfax's conservative Sydney Morning Herald. It was a venture built on borrowed money and mounting debt. Clorinda's patience was a quality Henry would note over the years. The only house they ever owned, which they called Falconbridge, was a house Henry had built later in his political career on a grant of land near Springwood in the Blue Mountains. Clorinda was happiest here. It was a place she could call her own. Home was her refuge. She shunned social engagements, preferring one of their adult daughters to accompany Henry on his many social and political engagements. But eventually the ever-present spectre of debt forced them to have to vacate Falconbridge and they moved to Hampton House in Balmain. In 1888, at the age of 75, Lady Clorinda Parks died after suffering poor health for a number of years. She was buried in a little cemetery in Falconbridge. Over their long marriage of 52 years, Clorinda had borne 12 children, losing five of them in infancy. Grief, crippling debt, frequent moves and the growing demands of Henry's political life put a strain on their marriage. In the latter years, the couple had become estranged and Henry had taken a mistress, 41 years younger. Her name was Eleanor Dixon. A year after his first wife's death, Parks married Eleanor. She was 32, he 73. Eleanor, or Nellie as she was called, had been his mistress for a number of years prior to the marriage, having had three children to him, the third being born just two weeks before Clorinda died. The marriage was harshly criticised, and when Lady Eleanor, as she would now be titled, moved into Kenilworth, a Gothic residence in Annandale where the family were living, Henry's daughters moved out in protest. Lady Eleanor was barred from many social functions to which Sir Henry was invited, but he refused to attend them without her. Yet she had a keen interest in social and political issues and often accompanied Sir Henry on political visits. The couple went on to have two more children. In 1895, at the age of 38 and just six years after they married, Nellie died of cancer after a long illness. She had been nursed during her illness by their young 23-year-old Irish housekeeper, Julia Lynch, who was also nanny to the children. At 81, Henry was left with five children, the eldest being 12, the youngest just three. He must have worried for their future because, apart from his advanced age, he was bankrupt, which meant that on his death it was highly likely they would be split up and sent to foundling homes. So, three months after Nellie's death, Henry once again raised disapproving eyebrows by marrying Julia, despite their age difference of 57 years. It is believed that it was Lady Eleanor's dying suggestion for the ageing Sir Henry to marry Julia to take care of the children. On the 27th of April, 1896, just six months after his third marriage, Henry caught pneumonia and died, penniless and in debt. Refusing a state funeral because Henry had wanted a private affair, Lady Julia attended his burial next to his first wife Clorinda at Falconbridge. 
Julia was left with the responsibility of raising the five children with no financial security. Yet, it seems she was a young woman of some fortitude and foresight. Upon Henry's death, one of his lawyers claimed that Henry had asked him to take charge of his considerable collection of letters and private papers and asked Julia for them. The astute Julia arranged for the lawyer to pick them up at a certain time. Unbeknown to him, instead of the prized letters and papers, she had substituted four trunks full of billet wood and every doorstop in the house, all wrapped in newspaper. The lawyer collected his booty and made off in haste, none the wiser. I went into the drawing room and lay on the floor, rolling all ways and laughing, history records Julia recounting to a friend. She subsequently ensured those papers, 96 volumes of them, were entrusted to the Mitchell State Library. Parliament legislated that Lady Julia receive an annual pension for herself and the children under her care while they were minors. She raised them into adulthood as if they were her own and never remarried nor had any further children. Lady Julia Parks died at the age of 46 years at Lewisham Hospital in 1919.